John Gormley, welcome back. So the Western Premiers in Canada, along with the uh, territorial leaders, are getting together this morning in Edmonton. Premier Alison Redford recently re-elected in Alberta, the host of the conference. Uh, according to Premier Redford, B.C. wants to do some issues related to families and community development. She says, quote, Premier Brad Wall from Saskatchewan and I want to continue to advance the Canadian energy strategy agenda. Now, a lot of this arises after the comments by Thomas Mulcair, the NDP leader, and the man who this week's political polls show would form the government if an election were held today. Strong growth in the petroleum sector, particularly the oil sands, has led to a higher dollar which hammers manufacturing in central Canada. When the premiers, led by uh, Brad Wall, uh, advanced the theory that A, Mulcair didn't know what he was talking about, and B, it was divisive and inflammatory. Uh, Mulcair uh, blew the Premier's office, quote, messengers of Prime Minister Stephen Harper. So what will the energy front feature in Edmonton today? Premier Brad Wall joins us from the Alberta capital. Premier, thanks for taking our call. Morning, John. Uh, What do you expect on the energy front as far as this Western meeting? Well, we're just uh, in the middle of uh, discussions about that right now. Uh, that's how we're starting the meeting. I think it's going to feature very prominently because of, you know, not just because of Mr. Mulcair's remarks, but just the debate that's emerging in the country around energy and the environment. And uh, obviously in the West, we want to seek a balance. We've all, we've each, uh, each of the provinces here and really provinces across the country and industry are investing more per capita here than I think any other energy power in the world to try to do better by the environment in terms of energy development. And and yet uh, we have major interests in this country, including one who wants to be the prime minister, who seems to be embarrassed by the fact that we have uh, that we are an emerging energy power. So we've got some work to do. There is the sense, particularly among Mr. Mulcair's constituency, that Canada, A, would be better off without oil, and B, can move toward that. How do you respond? <laughs> That's exactly the sense that I get from uh, from some uh, and it's it's remarkable. And what what other country in the world would think that way? What other what other country in the world would have principal interests who are aspiring to govern that to lead a country? Would they be better off if we didn't have this very important strategic resource? And by the way, if Canada didn't develop oil, if we weren't in the an emerging power in conventional oil as we are in Saskatchewan or oil sands as they are in Alberta. That would leave the oil development to countries in the world who are, frankly, far less stable and less interested in the environment, period. Uh, and so I think it's, you know, it's obviously short-sighted and just hard to fathom, especially when we know that the West is generating economic opportunities for the entire country at a time when economic opportunities are, are far too uh, uh, rare in the, in the world today. So it's, uh, it's hard to fathom that kind of thinking, John. Thomas Mulcair will be in Alberta, apparently uh, acquainting himself with uh, the, the Western issues and doing a tour of the oil sands. Do you have a plan to meet with him? Uh, no, there's not a plan to meet with him. I, I think the uh, I'm not sure schedules matched up, and I'm not sure the schedules firmed up for Mr. Mulcair until recently in terms of actually going to an oil sands property. So, uh, as far as I know, there's no uh, there's no meeting schedule. Is there a need, though, in, in your estimation as uh, the, the now longest in terms of incumbent Western Premier, uh, that he learns more about not just the economics, but about the politics of energy? Now, the short answer is yes, and not just energy, John, but he needs to find out more about the natural resource strength of the West, what it means for the rest of the country in terms of jobs, uh, what it means for uh, for economic growth right across Canada. Um, in the case of uh, you know, in the case of natural resources, obviously in Saskatchewan's case, if you're going to, as Mr. Mulcair would want us to do, quote unquote, internalize the environmental costs of of the resource sector, you will damage the certain you will damage more than the oil sand. There will be lost jobs in the mining sector. There will be lost jobs in the natural resource sector. And in others, frankly, cement production has a huge CO2 footprint that's going to be impacted by some sort of a carbon tax. He needs to find out about the facts. And then he needs to, I think, engage with much more detail 
on his part about exactly what he means when he says that he's going to, quote, internalize the environmental costs of these industries if he's ever the prime minister. Premier Brad Wall with us uh, in Edmonton, where the Western premiers are just getting underway. We've been able to uh, get the premier out for a couple of minutes. Uh, As far as the issues beyond resources, uh, is this meeting uh, called for a particular purpose, or is this one of the regular Western updates? No, it's a regular meeting. We meet every uh, spring, uh, the Western Premiers do. So this is a regular meeting. It happens to come in the wake of this whole debate that Mr. Mulcair started. And that's, I think, what people need to remember. It's the, it's the NDP that have sort of weighed into this and started this whole discussion. And even in our province, we have the provincial NDP who are supporting the federal stance. So that's why we're here talking about this. Uh, in addition to, I guess, some of the other agenda items we would normally be discussing at a at a Western Premiers meeting. And what are some of those uh, normal items? Well, the labor shortages that we have in the West. One of the challenges of a growing economy, for example, is that we are we have a current and in the long term a more acute labor shortage issue. And so immigration is important. Skills training is important. And together, especially on the immigration front, Western Premiers can make the case uh, uh, for lifting of caps for nominee programs, for the immigrant nominee program. We'll be talking about infrastructure uh, needs in the West and what may or may not be coming from the federal government in terms of the next generation of building Canada and a coordinative approach that we can take to work with the federal government on some of these issues. Premier Brad Wall at the Western Premier's meeting. On the immigration piece, uh, Jason Kenney has put both a cap on the number of immigrant nominees that Saskatchewan can nominate and this issue of family class status. Uh, what's Your government has... Now, have you come out and opposed this publicly? Uh, if not, why not? The cap we have, we've been very clear that we would like the cap increased. Oh, our cap is 4,000. For example, BC's is 3,500, if you can imagine. So they'd like an increase as well. We've been pretty clear about that, and I think we're making progress. We've made some adjustments and changes in the family class. It's still much more generous than you'll find in most parts of the country, where in some provinces they don't have any family class at all. Uh, in the case of our province, uh, we do. And there's also a federal piece uh, around family. Although, I'll say this, John, uh, and the new Minister of the Economy, as I think referenced this, we're going to look at, we're going to be open to potentially some adjustments in the changes even made recently to make sure we get it right. We want to strike the balance between meeting the labor shortage needs with the immigrant nominee program and also being welcoming to, to new families. Okay, you just alluded to the uh, new Minister of the Economy, Bill Boyd. I wanted, before I let you go, to have a quick uh, check-in on that new cabinet. Uh, how long and how difficult is it to make that kind of a major cabinet change? Oh, it, it's, a, it's a challenge, John, because, you're, you know, you're obviously affecting lots of people's lives, and we work closely as a team. I think we were very well served by the cabinet we had in place for two years, and uh, and so some are taking a break, and you know, it's uh, it's important to get this right in terms of the ask that some would take a break, but also the invitation to others to serve in the cabinet. You want to get that part right, too. And we've been fortunate to have great, you know, I, I mean, I'm biased, but to have very good cabinet uh, over the last four and a half years or so. And we want to keep that rolling. So it's also important to make sure government was structured around the goals we have for the economy, meeting the challenges of growth that we see. We wanted the, I wanted the shuffle to be not just about sort of, you know, moving people around, but rather be about the plan that we have and how do we best execute it. So we restructured government and we we're inviting some new people in to give them a chance and thanking those who've served, knowing that we've been, uh, you know, that I have uh, re-invited people back to cabinet after they've taken a break for a while. So nothing's for ever, and we're going to try to continue to build capacity on our bench. Premier Brad Wall, when you talk about uh, the change in the structure of government, does this then set out a blueprint of some things you want to see uh, in the remaining uh, three and a half years of this term? It does. Sean, I, I think it's fair to say that uh, that people in Saskatchewan were hopeful of growth a few years ago and uh, are encouraged by the growth that's happened. Uh, but I think the people of the province might also admit, including us in government, by the way, that maybe we weren't quite as prepared for the breakneck pace of growth we've seen and we continue to see. We need to do a better job on that front when it comes to infrastructure challenges related to growth, when it comes to uh, 
settlement issues for new citizens when it comes to engaging First Nations in the economy, I think we need to do a better job. Uh, and I wanted the, the cabinet shuffle and restructuring to signal that we recognize that we have to uh, be a be a part of a, a better solution going forward. The same in health. We now have a minister of rural health who's going to, and remote health who's going to be focused on that part of the healthcare system where, frankly, we need to do a better job. We have a real focused approach to infrastructure and highways with Don McMorris taking that file over as well as Saskatchewan builds a very effective health minister. Again, we need to do a better job in highways. So I hope this is a signal to the people of the province that you know we made some progress. We know that, but we have a lot of work to do, and we want to make sure government's properly structured to do it. Premier, appreciate you checking in this morning. Uh, good luck at the Edmonton meeting, and uh, we'll talk soon. All the best, John.